Welcome to Silco TV and our Circulation 1 training. Today we're covering how to create a borrower record in Horizon. Uh, to get started, we're going to need to do a search in Horizon to make sure that the borrower does not already exist. So I'm going to open up my CKO window. And then I'm going to go up to CKO. And then I'm going to go up to Borrower and Find Borrower. I can also just hit F4 if I like to use my keys. And I'm going to search for the borrower based on last name and then first name. So I can type in um, my last name followed by the first name. I do not need to include a comma and I do not need to worry about capitalization. And I'm looking for my daughter, Danielle, and I do not see a library account for her, which is good because I haven't created it yet. And um, just be aware that there are some instances where one person may have more than one account, and that would pretty much only be if they are either a student or a staff member at a school and they also have a public library card. So just keep that in mind. So since I do not see Danielle in here, I am free to go ahead and create a new record for her. Um, if she did have an account, and I'm going to use myself to show you how to make changes if you need to. So say your borrower is already in the account, you can just edit their record and um, go from there. So say they moved from Stewartville to Chatfield, I can change that information right in the borrower record. So I would go up to borrower, edit borrower, I can also hit F6, and I just want to make sure that I have the B stat correct, the B type correct, and the location correct. So if I need to change this borrower to Chatfield since I moved there, I can do that. And that way, as a member of the Chatfield library, I'd be sending uh, myself, sending Rachel the notices and whatnot, and it would get information from me instead of from my previous library. And if I page down, I can change the address and update the phone number, all that kind of good stuff. Um, but yes, for Danielle, since we couldn't find her record, I am going to go ahead and get that created. So that is a borrower and a new borrower. I can also hit F5. And the first thing I do is then scan in the barcode. And now that I've filled in the barcode, I can go ahead and give the PIN number done. And this is usually the last four digits of the phone number. And then I can fill in the B-type. Now I already know that the B-type I need to use is J for child or juvenile. But if I didn't know that, I can go over here to codes and I can kind of page through and find the one that fits the best. So like in a public library setting, adult is gonna be uh, one of my most popular ones to use as is probably child or juvenile. Um, and B type does stand for borrower type. And B stats are pretty important because they allow me to track things for reports and for funding. So the first one I put in is for um, duplicating my B-type of juvenile. So I'm going to hit codes and I've got BT and I'm going to look for juvenile here and I can see it's just BT-J. And then I'm going to hit the new button and that way I can add more than one thing. So what I'm going to do here is then fill in that um, information for city and in my example here, I'm going to say that we're in Chatfield. Now there are city and county B stats. And what those do is they allow us to kind of do a funding stream. So if anyone lives within city limits of a city that has a CELCO library, it will be CI dash and then the library code. So in this case, it's chat. Um, it could also be that if I'm living in the country outside of town, that I would need to go in and find the county that corresponds most closely to that um, area. And if you're not sure, of course, please ask your patrons um, if they're in town, out of town, what county they might live in, if it's a city that has more than one county, etc. 
it is very important that you only select one or the other of this county or the city B types. So they should only have one CI or one CO, but not one of each. This is because of that funding stream being um, basically being able to tell where the funding is coming from in this instance. So if someone lives in Chatfield, the city of Chatfield will give the library system a certain amount of money for each borrower that is within city limits. If, on the other hand, they live outside of town in Fillmore County, I would want to make sure I pick CO-045, even if they've got a Chatfield mailing address, because the county is actually responsible for their library funding. Now, reports are sent out periodically from Selco to clean up these records because it is very important that the patron only has one, either CI or CO code. We don't want neither, or we don't want both. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit my caps lock and type in her name. And then I can page down to fill in more information. So I am now going to fill in my address. So I am just having this as my demonstration. And since Chatfield I know is in our, rec in our database here, I can just start typing it in in the city and state area and it'll automatically fill in uh, Chatfield, Minnesota. If I do not have something down here in the city state codes, and you can see I've got a lot of different options here for a lot of different communities that we have borrowers in, I can type in their address, um, the city that they live in in the state on line four, and that should pick up as well in the, in the notices. And then I fill in my postal code. I can now ask the borrower how they would like to receive their notices. We have two different, we actually have three ways. The first way is standard, and that's gonna be um, having a printed notice mailed to them. We also have email notices, and this will just do the same kind of notices that they would get via mail, only in their inbox, and in their, in, in their email. And we can also do what's called a SMS notice, and that's a text message for many of the different kinds of notices in there. Um, we do recommend email notices for the most part because it is the least expensive. It's free for all the notices to go out. Since Danielle does not yet have her own address, I'm going to go in and type that in for myself. And if a borrower record has an email address in it, they will automatically send out a pre-overdue notice. So anytime an item is coming due two days ahead of the due date, an email will go out letting them know that it is um, almost time to renew or return. I do like to hit this as well. Also, um, a nice handy feature we have now is to allow email checkout receipts. So I usually like to check that too if I have an email address, just because that way it's an easy way for them to have a record of their due dates. So now that I've got that done, I can fill in my phone number. And then I want to select what kind of phone number it is. And since I know my codes, I can just type in H for home. And then if I hit new, because I want to also put in a cell phone number, I want to actually insert it before the home number. So I'm going to hit no. And cell is the code here for cell phones. And having a cell phone on file does allow me to have a text message notices sent to the borrower. And I'm going to actually ask for that, for pre-overdues and overdues and holds. That way, anytime any of these notices would be coming to me, it comes right to my phone, very quick and easy. It does cost the library 10 cents and any of the normal texting charges will apply to the borrower, but um, it's a nice feature as well. It is good to remember that those selections are down here in the phone field and not up here in the notice by area. And they do only get one kind of notice. So even if email is selected up here, 
as long as the SMS notices are selected down here, they will get the SMS notices. So just keep that in mind. You'll also probably want to fill in the driver's license number. Um, and that's usually the only other thing I have seen libraries collect. Um, but you might want to just check with your supervisor to make sure that there's nothing else that they need to get. And then I'll hit save and close. And you can see now that that has popped up the borrower record. So I'm now ready to check out books of Danielle. If you have a lot of people coming in um, from the same family, so say I've got seven kids who have just come in with Danielle and they all live at the same address and they all have the same phone number, I can just duplicate this record. So I can go up to borrower and duplicate borrower. And this will have everything filled out except for the barcode and the stats for the B stats. But otherwise, everything else I've already filled in will be duplicated. So that is a nice, easy way to do a lot of different records all at once. So that is how we create records in Horizon. Uh, stay tuned for more episodes here in the series of Circulation One Training. Mm -hmm.